So, the custom dice pack plugin. I know you're excited. You downloaded it and absolutely nothing happened. So you've come to this video to find out how you can get this thing working. Well, I'm going to start off with rolling my eyeballs at you because what that's telling me is if you're looking for a video, you haven't read the documentation that I took so much time to write and describe how you get it up and running. But okay, okay, fine. You want the easy way, you want the video. So that's what we're gonna do here. So in the first part of this video, we are going to uh, go through the process of getting the uh, demo dice, the demo custom dice that you saw in my previous video uh, up and running. And then in the second part of this video, we will go through the process of how to create completely custom dice skins and potentially true custom dice uh, from scratch. So let's get to it. So the reason why nothing happened when you downloaded the plugin is that the demo dice are tied to the save dice plugin file. Uh, what that means is right now there is no GUI for bringing out the custom dice. That's something that we hope to have in the future, but right now you need to bring out those dice uh, using a configuration file. Now that configuration file happens to be a campaign specific one so that when you add your custom dice and then you move to a different board, those dice will automatically be loaded for you again. The downside of that means that the file contains your campaign ID in it. And since I have absolutely no idea what your campaign ID will be, I can't provide a save dice plugin file with the demo dice for you to use. So as a result, you need to do a couple of small steps to get the demo dice working. So let's start with that. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to run Tailspire. There are different ways to create the save dice plugin file. You can do it from scratch if you want to, but this is kind of the easiest way for beginners. So start your Tailspire. So once Tailspire is open, uh, for the demo, all we need to do is add one die, any die, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to take a d20, throw it out on the table. Okay, <clears throat> and now the custom die pack plugin has basically a version of save dice plugin built in. Uh, that's why if you are using the custom dice pack, do not use uh, Save Dice plugin. It will conflict. Uh, it's already got it built in. You're getting all the features inside Custom Dice Pack, so you don't need uh, Save Dice plugin anymore. So once I've got a die out, I'm going to save that configuration. Um, the default for the save is right control D. Um, but that can be changed in the configuration. So um, if it's not working, check your configuration. Great. Now that we've got this saved, that created that campaign specific save dice file, which we can now edit to add in the demo um, content. Okay, so back to our files. So if we navigate to our custom dice pack plugin install folder, um, we'll see the plugin, uh, custom data, the usual stuff. And now we will see two save dice plugin files here. One of them, the older one, is the one that came with the plugin, and that's where our uh, custom dice are uh, defined. And then we've got this new one that we just generated right now. Um, in Tailspire. So what we want to do is we want to open up the one that came with the plugin. 
here we can see all of those dice that we saw in the video being defined. So we can see that there's a d6, another d6, another d6, another d6, uh, different types, a d4, and so on and so forth. Okay? For the demo, don't worry about what this all means, just copy it all. And now we're going to go into the file that we just created. Open that one up. Again, I'm opening these up in any um, text editor. I happen to use uh, Notepad++, but any text editor will work. Uh, here we can see that this was the one die that we added, a d20. That was the position of it, that was the rotation. Again, we don't need to worry about this. All we're going to do is delete this content and paste in our other content. So now what we've done is we've told it that when it loads that campaign, it's going to look at this file and load all of the dice that appear in this file, which are basically all of the, um, the uh, demo dice. So now we can save this. And if we run Tailspire now, we should see those dice loading. Let's give it a try. Back in Tailspire, we want to make sure that we load the same same campaign that we saved that dice configuration in. Um, it will work for any board in that campaign, but it is campaign specific. And that way, if you're playing a different character in a different campaign, uh, your dice can be different. And now, as we load this campaign, the plugin will recognize your saved dice file and it will restore the dice, in this case, the demo dice and move them to the saved locations. Now, we obviously saved the one die, but we replaced that content with the demo content. So now you can see that we've got all of the demo dice that were uh, shown in the uh, introductory video. We've got our uh, D4s, we've got our uh, D6, uh, yeah, our D6, our uh, true custom dice of the sixes and another one and then we've got our uh, 8, 10, 12 and 20. So that's how we bring about the demo dice. Now however you probably want to know okay great I like the demo dice but I want to make my own that's the whole purpose here. So let's get into that. So there's two parts to creating the dice from scratch. One, you've got to create the custom die, and then similar to what we did right now, you can bring that die out. So the first part is akin to kind of going out to the store and buying cool looking dice that you put in your dice box. And then the second part is fishing in, uh, through your dice box to find the ones that you want and putting them on the board. Now, the magic of digital dice means that we are going to create a custom die once and then we can uh, put it on the board as many times as we want, which is something you can't really do with physical dice, but hey, that's the beauty of digital dice. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to create our texture for our um, die. We're going to use one of the, the pre-made dice. Uh, we're not going to create our own. That's kind of beyond the scope of this, uh, this uh, video. But typically, you don't need to create your own models. You're just going to use one of the existing models, and you're just going to create a custom texture to uh, uh, use those dice with. OK, so let's start with that. Um, for this example, I'm going to use a D6 so that I don't have too many sides that I need to fill in. Um, but the exact same process uh, is the same for any of the other dice. So let's get started. So once again, back in our um, custom dice pack plugin uh, install folder, um, we will see that there is a UV templates um, folder. It's actually under uh, custom data custom dice packs, and then there's a UV templates folder. 
this is the template for all of the different types of dice, the 4, the 6, the 8, the 10, the 12, and the 20. Um, what the templates do, if it's not obvious, is they show you where each part of the die is so that you can put your content in the right spot so that when it is displayed in Tailspire, it looks correct. Okay? Um, matching the number or eventually if you're using keywords to the right side is very, very important. If I would make a D6 and just put the one on any one of the sides, put the two on any of the sides, um, it's a, there's a very good chance that when I would roll it, um, the side would show, let's say, three, and the total might be five. So you want to make sure that you use the templates, all the templates um, have the pre-printed number on them. So if we look here, you can see this is a D6, so these are the six sides. Uh, usually in the templates, you'll find some extra stuff like this. Um, this is basically for the kind of the edges. Uh, all of my UV mapping focuses on the actual faces and not the edges. So you will see that the faces are much larger than the other edge uh, stuff. Um, once again, if, you're, if you don't like that, you can actually create your own dice models with your own UV mapped stuff. But for beginners, this is uh, going to be sufficient. OK. So this is our template. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a <clears throat> uh, texture that is following this template. Um, you can make it any resolution. I don't even know what resolution I'm using here. So I happen to be using a 1024 by 1024, which is probably sufficient. I don't think there's any need to go higher than that. OK, and now we just need to put in our um, content of what we want these sides to look like. So with a little bit of uh, magic editing, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to bore you with uh, the details of uh, making texture maps and using uh, opacity layers in your favorite uh, image editing software. Uh, you can do that. Just keep in mind the uh, Templates are transparent, so uh, you can keep them on a separate layer um, while you're creating your content so that you know exactly where the content should be placed, and then eventually just delete them. So in this particular case, we have some Klingon dice. I'm not all that familiar with Klingon, so I had to look it up, but uh, apparently those are the Klingon numbers. In this case, I decided to put a nice uh, frame around there because uh, one and two look very, very similar. So this way, um, the framing gives it a little bit of uh, perspective as to which is which. Um, so once you have your uh, texture, we want to save it in a file access plugin legal location. What that usually refers to is in your plugins install folder, uh, in any of the folders there, if you create a custom data folder, you could put it in there or in any sub hierarchy. Um, that means you could put it in to your actual uh, custom uh, dice pack plugin install folder, but that is not recommended. Um, this is the same rule for all of your plugins. It is recommended that you create yourself a local content uh, folder or you can call it anything else if you really want, but uh, the recommended convention is local content in square brackets. Um, what that does is the square brackets make the folder appear alphabetically first, and since uh, file access plugin searches uh, folders al alphabetically, it's going to come to those first and read your configuration files from there first over any demo ones that happen to be with the plugin. The reason why this is important is when you update a plugin, R2ModMan deletes the plugin folder and downloads the new one. What that means is if you made any kind of changes to configuration files or put uh, images in your plugin folder, they'll all be gone. Whereas if you use a 
local content folder because that folder is not associated with any plugin directly. Updating any plugin will have no effect on your uh, local content folder. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to save this uh, texture file into a local content folder. Now, one other caveat, if you use your local content folder for minis, uh, for custom content minis, uh, then create another folder. Uh, the reason for that is when you register your assets, um, the uh, Calc plugin will rename your custom data folder to assets. And while file access plugin will actually um, recognize those, it is much better to use a separate folder, uh, local configs or something like that, um, so that uh, you can sort of keep those two things separate. So let's do that now. When saving your files, you can obviously use any file name that you like. I like the convention of uh, prefixing the file with the dice type, so a D6, and then um, adding some description as to what type of uh, texture file that is, because obviously you're likely going to have more than one D6 uh, custom die that you want. So you know, in this case, I used a D6 underscore Klingon. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're going to go to the uh, custom dice pack JSON file. This is the file that declares all of your custom dice. Um, it can be found in the uh, install folder under custom data. So once again, um, the install folder for custom dice pack, custom data, custom dice packs. You will find the custom dice pack JSON file. Once again, open it with any uh, text editor. And here is all of the dice, custom dice that have been defined here. This includes both um, your cosmetic style of dice and true uh, dice, uh, true custom dice. So all we're going to do is we're going to grab one of these entries so that we don't miss anything. We're going to add it to the end of the list. Uh, you could add it in the middle of the list if you wanted to. I'm just adding it at the end of the list. And now pay attention. Um, usually the last entry does not have a trailing comma. Um, the plugin will support it if there is one, but that means uh, make sure when you add your entry, to add that comma there if it was missing. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to like the uh, entry. Okay, then we need to give this die some kind of a name. Uh, this is <clears throat> the name that we're going to refer to it when we didn't want to make instances of it. So I will go, looks like here I used a kind of an opposite, um, opposite convention of uh, convention of the, like, the pack, the die, and then uh, increasing number or something like that um, if uh, there's multiple of those. So fine, I'll go with Klingon D6 and I don't expect to have more of those so I'm just going to go with Klingon D6. Okay, <clears throat> then the uh, dice pack. Typically you'll just want to keep this with uh, base dice. That is the set of uh, models that um, I, ha I have created uh, texture map um, with. Uh, so in this case, we have made our texture to match those, so you want to use base dice here. If you created your own models, uh, which you can, uh, the UV mapping will likely be completely different, so then you'd have to use those uh, textures. So keep um, base dice. Uh, we are making a D6, so D6 is correct. And now here we just put in the name of our texture file. Uh, because we've put the texture file in a file um, access plugin uh, legal location, we can just type the name. So I believe I did uh, D6 Klingon. Okay, and now <clears throat> we are right now making a cosmetic die only. We do not, not want it to have any kind of special roll sides. We just want to use the one through six. So we want to empty out 
the sides and images. When there are no sides and images, um, it makes this a cosmetic die, which basically means its appearance is altered, but it still rolls the regular numbers, so in this case, one through six. Okay, so we have made a Klingon die. Um, we'll test that in a moment, but um, I pretty well just gave it away. If we actually wanted to make a, um, a true custom die, let's say we don't want it to roll um, one, two, three, four, five, six, but we want to give us the Klingon name for the number rolled, then we do that by adding entries in on the sides. And the images are not used as of yet, but it is good practice to have to put them in them in, in there so that when they become available, uh, you'll already have them there. So when you're creating the sides, you need to have a, a numeric entry for each side of your die. So if it's a D6, you have to have numbers one through six. If it was a D8, you'd have to have one, one through eight. If it's a D20, you have to have one through, one through 20, even if some of your dies are going to be using the same keyboard. So you can see, for example, um, this was happens to have been a, a dragon dice type die. So it has uh, two attacks, two defenses, and two magics, but I still have to have them one for each side. So for Klingon, um, let's fill those in. So back in Tailspire, I decided to start a new campaign to get a nice clean board. Um, I could have deleted the dice from the other one, doesn't really matter. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to bring out dice that we then want to transform. So in our case, we have a, a Klingon die was a d6, so I'm going to bring it out a d6. Uh, let's say for the sake of argument, I want to have um, you know, three of these. So I'm going to bring out three of these. Okay. Um, if I was going to transform more, like if I had a whole Klingon set of dice, uh, I would bring out those dice uh, also. But in this particular case, we just got the six, so I'm going to go with that. Okay, I'm going to <clears throat> now uh, save the dice, dice configuration. Once again, this creates that all important um, dice uh, save dice plugin uh, configuration file for the campaign. And now I can exit out of Tailspire and go and edit that file, just like we were doing before for the demo. So going back to the um, plugin install folder, I can see now I've got three files. I've got the one that came with the plugin. I've got the one that was for the uh, de uh, demo campaign. And now I've got the new one. Uh, again, by the uh, timestamp, you can tell which is which. Actually, this one's my new one. Uh, by the timestamp, I can tell. Um, so we're going to open that up. And the point of putting those dice out there is because we already now have those three dice in the list. We've already got their positions. We've already got their types. Everything is already set up for us. The only thing that we need to do is fill in the customization. Um, again, it's not necessary. Uh, you could have created, <clears throat> once you knew the, the campaign ID, you could have created these individually. So you could have thrown down like one die, just like we did during the demo and then replaced it like we did in the demo. Um, that's totally up to you. Uh, I kind of find that this for beginners is the easiest because again, everything is already filled in for you. The only thing that you need to fill in is the customization. And the customization is just the name of the uh, custom die that you want to use. So if you go back to your custom packs, you can see each one had a name associated with it. So if I want to grab the Klingon die, and I can paste it in, and if I paste it in three times like that, I'm going to have three Klingon dice. If I wanted to use some of the other dice from here, like the rock, paper, scissors die, again, all I have to do is ask for one of these to be a rock, paper, and scissors die, 
and that's it. So right now, uh, this should get us uh, one rock, paper, scissors die and two click on dice. Let's see if our click on dice work. Save that. And let's start Tailspire. Okay, here we are back in Tailspire and let's see what happens. Okay, so what we've got here is our rock, paper, scissors die uh, seem to have loaded properly, but our Klingon dice did not. Okay, good. This is an excellent troubleshooting um, exercise. So what that usually means is the dice loaded properly, so our configuration for bringing them out is good. Um, the fact, though, that they are gray and they don't have our texture, which we worked so hard to um, create, uh, means that I probably either A, didn't save them in a um, file access plugin legal folder, possibly didn't put them in that uh, um, custom data subfolder, or I mistyped the name. So let me have a look and I'll get back to you. And yes, my suspicions were correct. I created a local dice packs folder uh, to keep my uh, dice pack uh, content separate from my local content, but I forgot to make a custom data data subfolder, and that is critical for the file access plugin. The file access plugin is only allowed to see stuff inside your custom data folder and any subfolders. Uh, so I need to put that into the custom data subfolder to make it accessible by file access plugin. Okay, back to Tailspire. Okay, let's try this. Take two. And there we go. We have our rock, paper, scissors die, and we have our Klingon dice. Looks like the um, choice of colors isn't the best. The black doesn't really seem to stand out. Well, I think it's a dark gray. It doesn't really seem to stand out on the blue background, but uh, if we look, we can see that when we roll them, they are custom dice. They are not giving us one, two, three, four, five. They are giving us the Klingon uh, name for those dice. So that's it. Uh, that's basically how you make custom dice from uh, scratch using the custom dice a pack plugin. Enjoy. That's about it.